Good morning or afternoon, depending on what time you wake up and what time it is where you're at here in the United States or in the world. My name is Jordan Smith and I'm an astrologer and I have my website, Nonconformist Conscience, where I go over the weekly forecast and what's happening in the cosmos, what's happening in the sky. Um, I also have my website. I just named that, but I also have a Facebook and it is under the same name, Nonconformist Conscience. And so like that page, like it on Instagram if you want to keep up with any of my content. Um, subscribe to this YouTube page and um, let's dive into this week. There's so much juicy information and um we are in this eclipse window. We had the first eclipse um, back on April 30th in Taurus. And then yesterday, um, we had the eclipse happening in Scorpio. And it was a total lunar eclipse. It was beautiful for some of us here in Oklahoma. Um, there was a lot of cloud clubber. So we didn't get to see it. But <clears throat> it is worth mentioning before I jump into this week's um, astrology forecast because we have seen within this eclipse window so much go on in the collective. This is the, you know, axis um, of death and rebirth of our relationships with ourselves, our self containment, our values. Um, listening to ourselves and this is all the tourist side and then on the flip side yesterday we had the eclipse happen in scorpio and so this is the death and rebirth process this is such an alchemical time and with this we have been having saturn and aquarius squaring the nodes and so this is very much about humanity and this is about um skip steps in our karmic evolution some of us could be creating skip steps for the next lifetime um, if we aren't consciously working with this energy of total liberation and rebellion against what we've known. And so here in America, we're going through our Pluto return. And so this is really about the soul of America. And back in 1776, Pluto was in this placement. And so what we're seeing go on now, especially with this eclipse, you know, these eclipses taking place is the um, psychological and hidden motivations, the manipulations that we're seeing in society with our government, the overturn, well, the possibility of the overturn of Roe versus Wade, it was leaked. That happened right after the eclipse in Taurus. And then we had a mass shooting and I'm not even going to name the shooter because I feel like that perpetuates what is happening in America by giving these people credence to feel like they're going to get fame from doing these terrible acts. And this revolves around, well, what was America um, based upon whenever it first came into inception? Well, us Americans like to think that we are the land of the free. But the truth of the matter is, is that we were built upon slavery and um, bigotry. And so here in this eclipse window, we see a mass shooter drive three hours to go and shoot up a grocery store in a predominantly black um, town in, uh, well, not town, but a predominantly black section in the town of Buffalo, New York. And so what can we do? What Here's the square that's going on. How are we as a society going to liberate from this? And, and what can we do to put it into the light of day so that now that we can have a reckoning, a liberation of any type of past um, cycles for us to move on from so we can now instill values, Taurus, as a society? and start with the new. So as I jump into this week's astrology, I wanted to mention that because we are really seeing it on a collective level. Um, the Taurus side of this transiting, um, the transiting nodes and the access 
is really Taurus, yes, it has to deal with self-containment and our values, our needs, um, the materials that we have are that we have inside of us to use, that whenever we use them, it affects the whole collective, it affects the tribe on a personal level, and then it expands out. It's kind of like dandelions in the wind. And so how are you going to use your gifts that you have as a way to further the evolution of the collective here in the United States and in the world? Um, another archetype of, type of Taurus is Gaia, Earth. And so we are going to see, in my in my opinion, more things that revolve around um, new ways to uh, use our resources in a way that is beneficial for, for Gaia instead of hindering Gaia. So how are we going to liberate from um, the mismanagement of our resources. This is all dealing with this eclipse. And so now that I've talked a little bit about this to do like a mini recap of that, um, and I go into more detail on it in my prior videos, if you wanna check back on them and look at them, um, if you're interested. Now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about this week. This week on the 17th, we have Mars conjunct Neptune and Pisces, and this is happening on Tuesday. And this conjunction is um, where Mars is moving towards Neptune. This is in the sign of Pisces. A lot of times there, with this conjunction happening and it's moving towards, this is a balsamic phase. In astrology, the balsamic phase is a culmination of an entire um, phase happening. So when we see this, we know that with Mars and Pisces, especially conjuncting Neptune, it, it amps up the Piscean energies. A lot of times when I see this in people's charts or like a Mars in the 12th house, Oftentimes people will feel like they have a sense of powerlessness, like where's my power? Um, and they feel like they're being overpowered or that they give their power away. Um, and really this is about aligning oneself with something higher than themselves, being used as an instrument of something higher, as a way to spiritualize. So how is this playing out in you guys' like, lives? Where is this happening in your chart? Um, also on this day, the moon is in Sagittarius and it is trining Venus in, in Aries. This is a disseminating trine, disseminating. We all know what that means. And if you don't, I'll explain a little bit. This is about putting information out there. And so with this moon in Sagittarius trining, Venus and Aries, Sag is very much the archetype of natural law. It's also about philosophies and a cosmological system. And so this moon is kind of signaling for us to align ourselves with some type of philosophy or cosmological system that is more in accordance with whom we are. Okay. And so, um, when we have Venus and Aries, this is very much a state of becoming. Um, it's very instinctual. And so this is really representative of us being in a portal of becoming, especially with these eclipses. So where are you going to align yourself? And I'm going to go more into exactly what this means as this week evolves, because there's so much that speaks to this content and it's really beautiful. And I really hope that you guys want to work with this energy in a conscious way. So Jupiter is also in Aries and Jupiter is the ruler of this moon in Sagittarius. Jupiter is the natural ruler of the sign of Sagittarius. So we're really looking at these aspects and their rulers. And so Mars would be the ruler of Jupiter and of Venus at this time. And Jupiter is the ruler of this moon in Sagittarius. And so a lot of this content is about being instinctual, aligning oneself with something bigger, aligning oneself with a cosmological value system uh, or a cosmological or philosophical ideology in order to create a new value system for oneself when they're in a state of becoming, 
while we're in a state of becoming. And we can see this in the collective, especially with all of this stuff happening. It's an opportunity for us. We are in a window, a portal of opportunity because we are in a state of becoming. So what are we going to do with these energies? How are we going to consciously work with them? Jupiter and Aries can very much be um, all of a sudden uh, an, an insight or a download of information. Jupiter is our intuitive brain. It's the right brain. It's in accordance with natural law. So if you have an instinct or a desire to act upon aligning yourself with something that's a new cosmological or philosophical system, do that and see if it fits the bill. Is this really whom I, I am? Does this align with my natural self, with my soul, and what my soul is trying to evolve into? So on the 18th, Mar Mars moves past Neptune, and this signals a new phase. So if you are working consciously with this energy, it is saying, okay, we're wrapping up the old ideologies that we might have been clamoring and uh, aligning ourselves with, and we're seeing what fits, what doesn't fit. And now we're starting this new phase of becoming. And... On the 18th, we also have Moon and Capricorn, and it is squaring Jupiter. And Capricorn is definitely um, about society. It can also, in its most natural expression, it is um, natural law within the society. How is that being represented? Represented? How is it coming to fruition? What's the inception of this? And how are we working with these energies? With this square to Jupiter, oftentimes we can feel like we are shedding old conditioning, old societal or familial conditioning, especially ones that are about um, guilt, and shame and judgment. And so this is really a call to action in our personal lives. How are we um, maybe allowing old conditioning and old belief systems that have been given to us by our family or by society dictating whom we are? And it's really not in alignment with how we really feel about ourselves. And so if something's coming up for you, regarding this, um, pay attention to it. And there can just be like this drop in of, oh, that's where that's at. And so really the call to action is to be able to have discernment around this is, am I feeling guilty because I've actually done something or is this, uh, so is this natural guilt or is this guilt that has been conditioned into me? Why am I feeling guilty? What is this about? And so this is for you to work consciously with this energy. So that way you can shed it and that way you can continue in this state of becoming. So then on the 19th, the moon and Capricorn squares Venus, and it's in a last quarter square. This can be a crisis in belief. So this kind of echoes what I just was talking about. And Venus is really about our values. And it's about, um, it's very much about our relationship with ourselves and it being in Aries. Um, I'm going to mention again, it's very much about the state of becoming. So what gifts did you bring with you in this lifetime that you can use in order to propel yourself forward in your evolutionary journey? Pluto's retrograde right now. Anytime, so is Mercury, which I talked about both of these in a previous video, but Pluto is in Capricorn. This is about society. It is about judgment. It is about, um, you know, the retrograde is very much relive, redo, repeat. So whatever's coming up for you in this six month period, I want you to pay attention because it's the content that is wanting you to be, to be worked with consciously. So that way, um, while you're in this state of becoming, you can really filter out what's yours and what's not yours. Okay. And so the sun in Taurus with this trine um, is very much about using your gifts as a way to further help the collective. 
whenever you are in alignment with who you are and you act on your desires that are of a natural expression and a positive vibration, it can only further the collective. And so on the 21st, the South Node is in conjunct Venus. And the South Node, like I've stated, is in Scorpio. And Venus is in Aries. And so this is now the crisis in action. How are you going to do this? How are you going to work with this energy? How are you going to use whatever comes up as a way and a form of motivation so that way you can be the change that you want to see in the world and in your life? Um, the sun moves into Gemini on the 21st and it conjuncts the retrograde Mercury. And so this is really about, um, if you're in a state of becoming, this is about really helping us identify whom we are in the world as a person. I am no longer this person. I am now this person. And a lot of times people will feel, um, kind of like a fraud or something whenever they're changing because society has conditioned in us that it's hypocritical to change. And so I want you to really pay attention to your thinking, a very Gemini type of expression as to how are you talking to yourself? Is it motivating or is it suppressing in nature? Because this is going to signal for you to work with these energies. On this day, the 21st, there's also the moon is in Aquarius and it is conjunct Vesta and it's at 29 degrees Aquarius. Vesta is the asteroid that is all about devotion. And so what are, where, how are you keep, keeping the sacred flame alive in order to continue Aquarius, to liberate Aquarius from the psychological content and from the conditioning that is keeping you from moving forward as you are becoming whom it is you are meant to be in this world. And so this week is very much just expanding this portal that the um, eclipse season has opened up for us. Whatever content that keeps coming up for you, that's having to deal with generational and ancestral karma, you, if it's coming up from you, for you and you are becoming aware of it, then you now have a responsibility to consciously work with this in order to liberate yourself from past crystallized structures. And this is really all of us who are feeling this. We chose this time, this place, wherever we chose to live as a way to consciously work with this. That way, not only do we further our evolution, but we further the evolution of the collective. And we are at the forefront of shaping new values for the collective. We are leaving behind what does not serve us. We are wanting to align ourselves with something higher and to be used as an instrument, as a way to further the collective. We have so many different types of souls coming in right now. We have, you know, a lot of the um, trans community coming out using new language as a way, and it's teaching all of us. I have a non-binary child who teaches me things all the time. Um, about, you know, uh, gender dysphoria and things like that. And so even in this arena, um, there is definitely the old is the so so social dinosaurs are wanting to, which is an Aquarian kind of uh, thing, are wanting to keep it the same way. Um, they don't want to change, make it available for uh trans people or non-binary people to put their correct pronouns or their gender on their birth certificates. And really like, how does that help further the, the evolution of the collective? It really doesn't. There, this is kind of a Gemini thing to make new distinctions and new correlations and new definitions. And so we could be seeing in the collective more about this, this these coming weeks and months and um, where are your values aligning with this? 
How are you wanting to further the evolution? Why are these kind of topics coming about? Lots of topics around racism are coming back up. We are in our Pluto return for America. And so if this country was established around these themes and these dynamics, is any of this content coming up for you in your um, psyche? Is what was once subconscious now coming up in order for you to work with this? Has there been dissonance? Are the people around you having dissonance? Um, what groups of people are you hanging out with that may be keeping you from living in your authentic soul's journey? Because maybe you're afraid because you've been socialized and conditioned to think that there's only one right way. Most of you, I have a feeling, are not going to be kind of in this category, but I want you to keep in mind and be aware and be objective um, of what is coming up around you and see what it's signaling towards for you to work with. This can be a really beautiful and a positive time I like to get fired up during these times because I feel like there's so many different deeper teachings that are wanting to be revealed. I talk about this so much and I think in almost every video of mine, um, it's probably all this kind of sag dynamics in my chart. Um, but I am here in the society that I find myself and I continue to listen. What, what are we supposed to be fulfilling? Why did we choose this time, this moment in time to be reincarnated? What am I doing? What are you doing? What is the collective doing on the evolutionary journey to further the, um, the natural truth that is wanting to be revealed to us? So I want you guys to keep that sacred flame and the devotion alive to continue to liberate and rebel against the status quo that is not in alignment with who your you naturally are and I have done a huge long written post about all of this where I go into it in more depth I, I kind of didn't do that for a few weeks I've left out more of the technical terms this time um, because I've really been listening to you guys and the feedback which I so um, appreciate because you guys teach me about being a teacher and I just very much appreciate it. And I want you guys to know that I appreciate you guys being on this journey with me as an astrologer. And so I'm also going to be offering this class and it's called, at first I was just going to title it around the elements. I'm coming out with a video later today about this and it's the embodiment of astrology. A lot of you guys are wanting to understand your charts on a personal level. And so I'm going to do a six week series and it's an introductory course for astrology. If you guys are wanting to learn about your natal chart, I'm going to have 10 spots open up and I'm going to be recording these classes. These classes are going to be held once a week for six weeks and they're two hours long. I'm going to have journaling and writing prompts for you guys to track the um, transits to see what's happening in your charts. We're going to talk about it. It's going to be an intimate setting, and I'm going to help you guys connect and embody with your charts even more. And this is going to be offered for $156 for only 10 people and for six weeks and for once a week, two hour classes. And um I am really excited to see who signs up. I'm really excited to see how it goes. And I'm really excited to be offering this class, especially in this window of time, especially with those of you who are wanting to work constructively and consciously with your natal charts. So I want you guys to uh, respond in the comments wherever you uh, look at this video. Email me if you want. I can be emailed and reached at Jordan, J O R D Y N, at Chiron, C H I R O N, apothecary.com. Um, you can also comment in the comment section on YouTube. You can message me on Facebook, and you can message me on the Nonconformist 
Conscience page on Facebook. You can also message me on Nonconformist Conscience on Instagram. And I love keeping up with you guys. I love hearing how this is playing out in your lives. And I also want to just say thank you to all of my clients who book sessions. I have been having issues with PayPal. It started whenever Mercury stationed and went retrograde. And so PayPal has been figuring this out for me at this time. If you book, if it's in person, you can pay in cash or you can cash at me or Venmo me at this time until my PayPal is up and running. They are figuring it out. And I appreciate you guys' patience so much with all of this. Um, sometimes you just have to laugh at the absurdity of life and how these archetypes sometimes play out. Um, I'm excited for myself and I'm excited for all of you guys. And I love you guys. Work consciously with this energy this week and let me know how it goes. And I hope to see you guys in sessions and I hope to see you guys in class soon. Much love.